Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now going to answer question number two from the June 2021 International A Level um, at Excel Mechanics M1 paper. Um, this question here is about constant acceleration, and here we have a car moving along a straight horizontal road with constant acceleration A, where A is greater than zero, so it's it's not decelerating, accelerating. The car is modeled as a particle. At time t equals zero, the car passes point A in and is moving with speed u meters per second. In the first three seconds after passing A, the car travels 20 meters. In the fourth second after passing A, the car travels 10 meters. The speed of the car as it passes point B is 20 meters per second. Find the time taken for the car to travel from A to B. So the first thing we've got to notice is some of the key words here. And one of those words is or key phrases, constant acceleration. Okay, so the SUVAT equations will apply throughout the beginning to the end of this journey. Okay, it's constant acceleration, and you can apply SUVAT throughout this, the whole of that journey. That's the first thing to note, um, and this, that's very important. Now, let's just make a little diagram to make things clear. So we know that it's going with constant acceleration, so that bit is registered in our brains now let me just make a little diagram okay just to illustrate what's happening it makes life a lot easier to do that so at t equals zero it passes point a so this is let's call this a point a time equals zero it passes a the speed is u meters per second so let's just imagine it's moving this way take that as positive in the first three seconds after passing a the car travels 20 meters so the first three seconds, let's let's say it's got um, to the point x. I'll just call the x. This is three seconds, and it's travelled a total distance in that time of twenty meters. So the distance between a and x is twenty meters. Okay, that's twenty meters. All right. It doesn't tell us anything about this second, this point here. Okay, just that after three seconds, it's gone twenty meters. Then it says in the fourth second, so one more second, after passing A, so it's an extra second after passing A, it travels 10 meters. So it travels 10 meters in that one second. So let's say it's reached point Y and it's traveled another 10 meters. So that's 10 more meters. And that's in the fourth second. Okay, so that's after four seconds, it's traveled another 10 meters. So altogether between A and Y, what we called Y, it's traveled 30 meters. Then it says the speed of the car as it passes point B is 20 meters per second. Find the time taken for the car to travel from A to B. Now, of course, B can't be here, okay, because it would be pointless because we know that's four seconds. So the point B is somewhere further along. And by the time it reaches B, so we don't know where B is. I can put this at the end here. Okay, it's um, traveling at a speed. Okay, so the, the speed at B is equal to 20 meters per second. And we have to find the time it takes to reach B. We don't know the distance either. We don't know any other information except for that. So that's all the information we have to go by. And we have to find the time it takes to reach B. Okay. So if we look between A and B. And see what information we have and what information we need. Okay. I'm going to write down SUVAT because we have constant acceleration here all the way from A to B. So I don't know the distance between A and B. Um, I don't know the initial speed of A. I know that the final speed of B, of, at B is 20 meters per second. Um, I don't know what the acceleration is, just constant. And I don't know what the time is, I have to find it. So all of those things I don't know. Okay, so if I think, if I want to find the time it takes for me to get from A to B, the total time, then in this equation, what things I need to know, okay, um, if I, for example, if I use V equals U plus AT, if I know my initial speed, if I know what U is, and if I know what A is, okay, I can find what T is because I know this already. So I need to find U and A. I need to find the speed, the initial speed at U and also the acceleration, okay, and what I can do now is I can use these other bits of information here to help me. So let's look at between A and X and see what we have. Again, SUVAT. OK, 
Okay. Of course, some of these things won't be the same between A and X as they are between A and B. For example, the distance is not the same. I know the distance between AX is 20 meters. I know the initial speed is U. This is the same U as that. It's the same speed at A as this is U. Okay, I don't know what the velocity at the final velocity at X is. I don't know what that is. Um, the acceleration, I don't know what it is, but I know it's the same acceleration as this. So the U and A in, in this situation is the same as the U and A in that situation, which is useful. So if I can find U from this and A from this, it will be the same U and A as in there. And the time here we know is three seconds. Okay, let me also look at what I have between A and Y. I'll just put this over here. Between A and Y. From A to Y, again we have S, U, V, A and T. Now, between A and Y, I know S, well, I, I know S is 30 meters. It's 30 meters, right? From here to this, 20 plus 10, that's 30. Again, U is the same because I'm taking A as my initial place, U is the same U as in these two situations. Uh, v, I don't know what it is. That's the velocity at Y, I don't know what it is. Um, the acceleration, again, is constant all the way through, so the A is the same in all three cases here. And the time I know is four seconds. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see I've got a bit more information in these two situations than I do in that situation. So I might be able to find... Uh, my U and my A from these two situations, okay? So I know the S in both situations. I know the time in both situations. But I can't use this at all because the velocity in this situation, the final velocity in this situation is at X and the final velocity of this situation is at Y, so they're not the same at all. But these two are the same and these two are the same. So I'm going to think of an equation where I'm going to be using S and U and A and T and that equation is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So if I consider from A to X first, I have S equals 20, U equals U, which we, which we have to find, um, T is equal to 3 plus a half times A, which is the same A as here, which we have to find, times t squared, which is 3 squared. And if I look at a to y, which I've called y, that second situation, we've got s equals 30, u is equal to, well, the same u as here, so this is the velocity at a, okay, um, times uh, 4 seconds this time, ut plus a half times a, which is the same a in both situations, times 4 squared. Okay, so we can now um, see I have Two unknowns here, U and A, which are the same as these two unknowns. So I, I think I'm going to use simultaneous equations to find A and U. And then once I've found the A and U, I can use it in this equation to find my T. And then I'm finished. So let's just simplify this. You've got uh, 20 equals 3U plus, that's 9 over 2, A. And here I've got 30 equals 4U plus you've got a half times 16, which is 8a. Um, this can simplify to 15 equals 2u plus 4a. Just divide by 2. And this can simplify, if I multiply by 2, I'll have 40 equals 6u plus 9a. So I now have these two equations, which I can solve simultaneously. So if I um, just write, the, this is equation 1, and equation 2, as we've got there, 15 equals 2u plus 4a, I call that equation 2. If I subtract those two equations from each other, I've got, um, well, I can't yet, sorry, I have to modify one of them first. I can't just do it straight away because I have to make one of the coefficients the same. It looks like u is easy to make the same. So let's call this equation 2. Multiply by 3, so you have 45 equals 6u plus 12a, um, that's equation 3, and I'll write equation 1 underneath it, 6u plus 9a, that's equation 1. Let me now subtract these two, that's 15 equals 0 plus 3a, therefore the acceleration is equal to, so that's 15, that's 5, not 15, sorry about that. So the acceleration, 45 minus 40 is 5, 12 minus 9 is 3, so the acceleration is 5 over 3. Okay, so 5 over 3 meters per second squared is acceleration, and therefore I can now find out my 
speed, u. Okay, because I can rearrange this equation. I can say 15 minus 4a. That's what u is going to be divided by 2. 15 minus 4a over 2. So it's going to be 15 minus 4 times 5 over 3, which is 20 over 3 divided by 2. That's going to be uh, 45 over 3 minus 20 over 3. That's 25 over 3 divided by 2, which means times a half which is 25 over 6. So I can see that u is equal to 25 over 6 meters per second. So I've got a and I've got u. Now I've got to use those to find what t is. Okay, so now if I look at this situation here, I can just take this to the next page. So let's just, we, we've got between a and b. We had s, u, v, a and t. Okay, we didn't know what the distance was. We know that the initial speed, we found it now. The initial speed of this is 25 over 6 meters per second. Okay, 25 over 6 meters per second. The final velocity we're told is 20 meters per second. The acceleration was 5 over 3 meters per second squared. And the time is what we have to find. Okay, so we were told this in the question. Um, we don't need the distance, we have to find the time. So we can use v equals u plus a t. If I rearrange that for t, I have v minus u over a is equal to t. So the time is equal to v, the final speed, which is 20, minus the initial speed, which is 25 over 6, divided by the acceleration, which is 5 over 3. So if I calculate that, I get my time. So this is going to be 120 over 6 minus 25 over 6, just make them the same denominator. I could do this in my calculator, but it's no problem. We can do it mentally. 125 minus 20 is 95, so that's 95 over 6, divided by 5 over 3, which means times 3 over 5. We can cancel this with this. That's 2. 5 into 95. 5 goes into 5 one time, 9 one time, remainder 4. 5 into 45 goes 19 times. Uh, 9 times, so that's 19 over 2. Um, 2 into 90, that's going to be 9.5 seconds. So the time is 9.5 seconds. And there we have the answer for question number 2. Okay, so the key to answer such questions is to remember certain key things. Like, um, if there's constant acceleration all the way through, you can use SUVA. Okay, and I can use, it will be the same acceleration all the way through from the beginning to the end. That A will be the same all the way through. Okay, um, the thing you have to take care of is, you know, the different things in different places. So A to X and A to Y and A to B, that U will be the same. So if you consider from A to X and A to Y and A to B, the U will be the same every time. But things will be different, will be like the distances, A to X won't be the same as A to Y. The final speeds won't be the same because the final speed at X, Y and B will be different and stuff. So you have got to be careful to see which of these are going to be the same and which is going to be different. So the way I set this up from A to B and A to X and A to Y, of course, acceleration is the same all the way through. But the, thing, the other thing that's the same all the way through in all of these three cases is U because I've taken A as my initial place for all of them. But Vs will be different and also the Ss will be different. Okay, so that's very important for you to realize. And there we have the answer to that question. Okay, just have to uh, realize that if we find what U is and A is, we can get the answer. And U and A can be found from these two um, bits of information because those are unknowns which are the same in both cases. So we can use this formula to find what U and A are from forming two separate equations from two situations. I've called this point X and this point Y. They didn't give it a label. I just did it to make it clear. Okay, so there we have the answer to that question. Um, other questions from this paper can be found by clicking on the link that will appear at the end of the video over here. Other questions about um, constant acceleration can be found clicking on this link. This is for M1. Other questions, uh, you can also find another paper linked in M1 from the card that's been appearing sometimes on this video at the top here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and other um, papers you might want to see like P1, P2, um, P3, P4, S1, also uh, IGCSE papers. You can find in the uh, description, you'll find links to, to, to those papers from there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.